not attempt to adjust your audio settings. Your system is working at optimum capability. There is no need to look over your shoulder, just relax. Breathe. It will all soon be crystal clear. There we are. True Horror Stories of Texas The Black Eyed Kids Tonight's tale comes to us from Abilene, Texas, where a woman recounts her terrifying encounter with a pair of children with cold black eyes. My memory, while good, isn't quite what it used to be. Near as I can figure, this happened in 1996. I've managed to pin down the date that far. I feel like it happened in the spring or summer since I remember wearing a pair of shorts, but one of my great regrets is not recording the actual date of the event. I do recall it was raining as I drove through the city that night. I had gone down to the former site of Camelot Communications, one of the area's original internet providers, to pay my bill. At the time, Camelot was located on North 1st Street, near the movie theater, in the shadow of what is now Chase Bank. I was using the light of the theater's marquee to write out my check, which I planned to put in Camelot's night drop slot. Involved in my work, I never heard them approach. There was a knock on my driver's side window. Two young boys, somewhere between 9 to 12 years old, and dressed in hooded pullovers, stood outside. I cracked the window a bit, anticipating a spiel for money, but I was immediately gripped by an, an incomprehensible, soul-wracking fear. I had no idea why. A conversation ensued between one boy, a somewhat suave, olive-skinned, curly-headed young man, and myself. The other, a red-headed, pale-skinned, freckled young man, stayed in the background, quiet. Hello, man? My brother and I were going to watch Mortal Kombat, but we left our money back at home. The spokesman, as I've come to think of him, told me that he and his companion needed a ride. They wanted to see a movie, Mortal Kombat, but had left their money at their mother's house. Could I give them a ride? Plausible enough. But all throughout this exchange, the irrational fear continued and grew. I had no reason to be frightened of these boys, but I was. Terribly. Please, ma'am. We don't mean to be a burden, and we hope we haven't ruined your evening. Our mother's house isn't too far from here. We would get there quicker if you drove us. It wouldn't take long. After a bit more conversation, I looked up at the theater marquee and down at the digital clock display in my car. Mortal Kombat's last show of the night had already started. By the time I would have driven boys anywhere and back, it would practically have been over. All the while, the spokesman uttered assurances. It wouldn't take long. They were just two little kids. They just wanted to see their movie. They didn't have a gun or anything. That last part was a bit unnerving. I noticed that my hand had strayed toward the lock on my door. I pulled it away, perhaps a bit too violently. In the short time I had broken the gaze of the spokesman, something had changed and my mind exploded in a vortex of all-consuming terror. Both boys stared at me with coal black eyes. The sort of eyes one sees these days on aliens or bargain basement vampires on late night television. Soulless orbs. I did what I feel any rational person would do. I full on freaked out inside while trying to appear completely sane and calm. I apologized to the kids, I made whatever excuses came to mind, all of them designed to get me the hell out of there fast. The aura of fear was now a palpable, black hanging thing, almost as if reality itself was warping around me. I began to roll up the window, apologizing all the while when- You can't come in unless you tell us it's okay. Let us in! The spokesman banged sharply on the window as I rolled it up. His words, full of anger, echo in my mind even today. We can't come in unless you tell us it's okay. 
Let us in. We can't come in unless you tell us it's okay. I wrapped my hand around the gear shift, threw the car into drive, and quickly drove out of the parking lot in blind fear. And I'm surprised I didn't sideswipe a car or two along the way. I stole a quick look in my rearview mirror before peeling out into the night. The boys were gone. Even if they had run, I don't believe there was any place they could have hidden from view. Listen! Well, I don't know about you, but I think I just peed a little. If you ever find yourself confronted by children with soulless eyes, just remember, it could be worse. They could be your children. True Horror Stories of Texas. Until next time, stay spooky, my friends. <laughs>